Hi everyone, uh, today we have with us uh, Joshua Irby who lives in Sarajevo, Bosnia, Herzegovina with his wife and four children. Uh, he's originally from Atlanta, Georgia and he graduated with an industrial engineering degree from the Georgia Institute of Technology but chose to work with students instead of becoming an engineer. In 2011, he wrote his first book, Meeting Miss Irby, which tells of his distant cousin Adeline Irby, who her journeyed to Bosnia in the 19th century and became a national figure of hope during a time of uprising and unrest. Uh, this story is so interesting because Josh weaves together Miss Irby's story with his own story, two people following their hearts to make a big difference in people's lives. Uh, and you can also find uh, his very inspiring blog posts and stories that he has of just people he meets uh, at joshirby.com and where you can and you can also subscribe there uh, uh, to hear regular updates of what's going on in their life. So thank you for joining me, Josh. It's just such a pleasure to have you here today. Well, this is this is fun to do. This is great. I'm sitting in Sarajevo, and uh, we're talking across. The ocean, it's pretty awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> I know, who knew? I, 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 was, know. I was actually just telling my kids that the other, we have four kids too, mm -hmm. and I was just telling them that, isn't that amazing? I can actually talk with someone in Sarajevo, and my, my son, Sejal, he's 16, he says, so what's new with that? They're just so used to that. <laughs> I was talking <laughs> with one of the younger people on my team about when I first moved overseas, and... Um, and she said something like, well, didn't you just Facebook them? And I was like, Facebook didn't exist in 2001. You know, it's just it's a different world. You know, we wrote physical letters and we stuck them, we gave them I to know. a person and entrusted them to actually deliver them yeah. to where they needed to go. I know. So, so you know, our kids are, are used to how this works, but we're just, yeah. just kind of in awe still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely in awe. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, I, we just, I just wanted to ask you a few questions, Josh. I think people are just so... Uh, would be so inspired and so just intrigued by your passion and your story. Um, so the first question I have for you, could you share your story and, and what influences or important moments you know you, you experienced in your life that sparked thoughts about living your life in pursuit of a mission that would make a difference in students and other people's lives? Yeah, I find it a little funny that I live overseas now since I never got on an airplane until I was in college. Uh, and that was only to fly to Canada, actually. Is, is that right? <laughs> Just barely made it out of the country. So my first actual international trip was to move overseas to live for a year in Croatia after college. But I think I grew up in a big family. There's eight kids in my family. Um, my father was and is a pastor and has been my whole life. And uh, when, when I was born, he told me, he said, Josh, there's two important things you need to know. Uh, God loves you and has a, a wonderful plan for your life and you're going to have to pay for college yourself <laughs> and so I went through life with those two very important things yes. in mind and you know growing up in the church there was always missions conferences and people coming through from all around the world and we had exchange students live with us when you have eight kids it doesn't matter if more people are there it's no. just <laughs> extra people so yeah. you know we had three exchange students live with us so in some ways we were always connected with the world even though um, I wasn't able to travel the world. Yes. And so, and also early on, I feel like my father and mother really instilled in us this idea that you can do anything that you really want to do if you put your mind to it. Now, we know that's not really true because, um, you know, I probably wasn't going to be a pilot because I'm six foot four, but, um, you know, this is idea that if I really wanted to go after something, yes. I want to do something important in the world, I could do it. And so I think I spent my time uh, growing up through elementary and high school just trying to figure out what that thing was. You know, I wanted to be president of the United States. I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be an NBA basketball player. You know, I yeah. wanted to be a musician. Whatever the things that I wanted to do, and I would pursue those things. And uh, when I was in college studying engineering, um, I got involved with the student organization there that had a huge impact in my life and I really uh, grew in my relationship with God and my desire to be a part of the world. And I thought that looked like um, actually becoming a philosophy professor. I, I started taking, I was at engineering school and I took every philosophy class they had because I was just fascinated with <laughs> these big questions of is there a God and does that matter and, and what should that make a difference in my life. and. And so I, I was coming into my senior year thinking I'm going to apply, go study philosophy, 
maybe get a doctorate, teach in college. And one of the staff guys with the student organization came along and, and said, you know, Josh, we're starting this new thing in Croatia, and uh, I think you would be great to go there and help us start this student group there. And my first question was, where's Croatia? Because I never <laughs> really yeah. heard of it. I didn't, yeah. really wasn't sure. So he showed me where it was on a map, and three days later, I was signed up to move to Croatia. Wow. And it was just one of those completely random things that, that God does. So I moved to Croatia, and what I discovered is I love sitting at coffee and talking with students about questions that matter in life. Like like I mentioned, you know, is there a God, and why does that matter? And what's yeah. my purpose in life, and how can I fulfill it, yeah. and how can I find true hope and satisfaction in life? And I discovered I could do that without 10 more years of college, without going and getting a doctorate degree. I could do that right now with college students. Yeah. And so since then, I, that's what I've been doing since 1999, working with this student organization. And um, I've been in two years in Croatia, eight years in Atlanta, and now four and a half years over here in Bosnia. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. I mean, that's, and that's, uh, that's seems like there's been a golden thread, actually in your life, yeah. right? That would sort of lead you, uh, uh, you know. It's, it's living. like the golden thread, you never can see it moving forward. You can only see it moving back. Yeah, no, and that's so right. <laughs> forward is like I kept pulling at these threads and trying to figure out how they fit together. Maybe some philosophy, you know. I wrote music and saying that, maybe it's that, maybe it's this or that. And then you look back and you realize all those little individual threads were weaving together into some kind of story that yeah. actually makes sense. Yes, is, yeah. that's just, oh, that's so neat. Wow. Well, uh, this wasn't totally smooth sailing for you, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. uh, so could you share some obstacles that you faced and how you overcame them to get to, get to the place where you felt that God was calling you to? Yeah. I think, well, there's the constant obstacle of fear. Yeah. I think there's obviously the, the first obstacle is not knowing what to do and having no idea what to do. But often, it's not that we don't know what to do, it's we're not sure that we want to do it, you know, whether we can overcome the fear to start doing it. And I faced that fear when I, uh, really, if you go all the way back, when I first decided that um, I really wanted to give all my life to God and let Him, and go wherever He led me. That was yeah. a very scary thing. Yeah. I was scared He was going to lead me uh, to some, live in some hut somewhere in the back corner of some country married to an ugly woman with children who age I don't know. That's what I, that's what I thought was going to happen. And I was like, I really want to give this control over. I yeah. mean, I'm pretty good at running my life. Yeah. So I thought. Um, so that, and then the fear was there when, when I had to move to a country that I didn't know where it was. I was like, okay, well, okay, God, it seems like this is what you want. I'll go for it. Yeah. And the fear was definitely there as we were preparing to move overseas with two small children uh, to Bosnia. Um, I remember being utterly overwhelmed. Yeah. How do you, what do you do with your house, your car, your stuff? Oh, do you, yeah. what do you sell? What do you pack up? What do you take with you? What shipping company do you use? Where do you live when you get there? How do you get a visa there? And all these things we had to figure out because we were, um, we weren't the first people with our organization, but the first people to move there long term. Yeah. So, uh, I was so overwhelmed that I decided I'm gonna I got to do something just to you know get my mind around this. So I started um, did a, a little Daniel fast. I'm changing what I'm eating. I'm really like, okay, God, let's help me figure this out and not be so stressed out. And I'm playing basketball with some students at the university a couple of days into this, and uh, I feel this pain in the back of my leg, and I fall down, and I realize that I've torn my Achilles tendon. Oh. This is, so I'm, I'm like utterly, completely overwhelmed. Yeah. And I think, you know, God, take some of this stuff off me because I can't handle it. And then he says, now I want you to do it on one leg. <laughs> now go. <laughs> and so I, I remember just kind of laughing. I was like, okay, now this is ridiculous. This is at the point of overwhelming obstacles that I know that either – I'm not going to make it or God will carry me through this. There's really only two, two options. options. <laughs> yeah. And so that was the point. I'm, I'm sitting in my house. I'm, I have my computer open. I'm typing in my to-do list, you know, things like rent the house or sell it. Yeah. Sell all your stuff or give it away, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, my foot's propped up on a 
little bench in front of me. I'm waiting to have my surgery at the end of the week to sew the tendon back together. Yeah. And that's when I got this email from a friend living in Bosnia about uh, Miss Irby. And, and the email was really short. It said, Josh, I was reading this history book by Noel Malcolm called Bosnia Short History. And there was a sentence I think you'll be interested in. In 1870, a woman named Pauline Irby opened a school for girls in Bosnia. Ah. Oh. So that was the sentence. And I thought, yeah. What in the world is that? I've been traveling to Bosnia for 10 years because I first started when I moved to Croatia because it's a neighboring country. I had spent three summers there. I'd been traveling back and forth a lot, short term, but I had never heard of another Irby moving to Bosnia. Yeah, wow. Uh, much less an Irby that they talked about 100 years later or was written in a, in a, yeah. a history book. And yeah. it's not like you know Smith or Jones or things like that. Irby is not that common of a last name. So that gave me something to do while I was laying in the bed for the next three months, uh, you know, getting the surgery and recovering from <laughs> yeah. it. I scoured the internet. I found a book in England. I started researching her life. I discovered that she was a woman who loved God and because she loved God was willing to leave wealth, privilege, comfort in England. Wow. Upper class life in England to yeah. help a people in Bosnia where, where young girls didn't even couldn't even go to school and she said that's not right I want to make a difference and so as I saw the obstacles she had to overcome yeah. like riding in a hay cart for two days oh. uh, through the mountains of Bosnia yeah. to cover the same distance that I can do in two hours yeah uh, I thought my problems don't look as big anymore <laughs> compared to what she had to put up with and it was like God saying if I could get her to leave that and to go there and do that but I can get you to do whatever I want you to do. I can work it out. <laughs> yeah. And so that was kind of, it wasn't the reason we moved to Bosnia. And God saved that information for just the right time when I was completely hopeless to kind of push us over the edge and let us know that this golden thread actually weaves together into something beautiful. And so, that I mean, we have faced many other obstacles after that, but that was probably the moment of truth where we really had to, push through the obstacle and move forward. Yes. So I did have a question that just came to me, actually, as you were talking. Um, so how did, uh, you know, I was just thinking of another obstacle, but, uh, you know, obviously you and your wife were in agreement, right? Uh, yes. Uh, but how did that affect her moving uh, moving there? So you, you know, you had friends there, right? You had some friends. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how did that, you know, because when you're married, I understand <laughs> So you need to be, you know, uh, it, it can be hard, these new things that you go into. So how was that on her, at, you know, with the kids and all that? Yeah. Well, this is one of the the interesting things. I'll talk about her and then I'll talk about the kids because those are definitely big issues that we still deal with today. But yeah. um, with her, she started, I was on staff with the student organization. When, when we started dating, she began to find out about it and eventually came on. So we're on staff together with it. Yes. And so okay. the, when we were dating, this was in 2003, I was leading a summer group. of had 19 people on the trip, and she came and visited me on that trip. It was our first time ever coming to Bosnia. But on that trip, I asked her to marry me. Oh, that's so awesome. Our story is kind of woven through here. Then in 2005, we came with another group, and we were newly married, and we led that group together. So she got more exposure to it. And then 2008, we came. We had two small children. Okay. So I was bringing her along through the whole process, and we okay. were kind of waiting. She, she had actually said um, her whole life she wanted to move overseas. Oh, wow. But okay. She, she, it's hard to, to, to make the decision that now is the time. Yeah. In fact, one little funny side thing. When I first got her out on a first date, she didn't like me. And she um, was trying to, uh, you know, get me to not like her. So she goes, yeah, I really just want to move overseas, you know, and, you know, just live in a hut somewhere or something. I'm like, this girl is awesome. <laughs> and she's, she's trying to drive me off. But I, uh, so anyway, that, didn't, that backfired on her. But um, So she always had this dream of moving overseas, but really fear and, and different obstacles that kept her from doing it, not knowing with whom or where. Yeah. And so it was one of those threads that all um, came together. That's amazing. Yeah. I remember standing in my daughter's 
um, nursery that we were just finishing up that she hadn't been born yet and looking at each other and saying, we're really going to do this thing. We're really going <laughs> to move to Bosnia and making that decision. Yeah. And so that's been cool. That From the beginning we both decided and we've been in this journey together because there's no way I could do that without her, without us both being on of the course, same page. Of course, yeah. And, and the kids have been, you know, the kids are usually fairly flexible. They've been yeah. good in the new surroundings and all that. Yeah, they were yeah. They were younger when they came, but there are many things that, there are many things that are, they can enjoy that are better here, I would say better, or, or different in a good way. Yeah. Like, every morning, I walk my daughter to school 20 minutes through the old town of Sarajevo. And oh, I pick her up great. and we walk back. Yeah. Uh, but she has to go to school in a second language. You know, she's oh, okay. memorizing yeah. the months of the year in Bosnia and in Croatian. I mean, she's, she, she's having to do that, but that's also like sharpening her brain. I mean, she, she can read in two different languages at seven years yeah. old. So, wow. So, so there these, there's, in anything we do, it's not like anything is all good or all bad. You have this pluses and minuses. There's things that are better. Yes. Like, I don't know how I can live without that now, now that I have that. Yeah. And there's things that are worse. Like, I don't know how I can live with that <laughs> for very long. And so you just yeah. kind of go back. And that's why I keep falling back on. You don't do things based off pluses and minuses. You do things based off what God wants you to do. Yes. And if God wants you to do it, you just... Find your best way around the minuses and enjoy the pluses. Yeah. And because uh, that's real, where the real fulfillment comes. Yeah. That's a great perspective, Josh. Uh, yeah. I just, um, you know, I just think there's a lot of people listening that um, uh, have gone through or are making decisions, maybe, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, do something uh, big, you know. And so I just, I think your story is really going to inspire them. And you know, encourage them uh, along I the hope way. So. Yes. One one quick word about if you're if people are listening and they're trying to decide whether to do something big is that rarely does the confirmation come before you start moving. Yes. So you can't That's wait good. until you get confirmation and then decide, okay, I'm going to do it. It's when you start moving, when you're already facing your fear and driving through it. That's when it seems the confirmation the, the comes confirmation along. Confirmation comes. So it's almost like so, you have to take a step first. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you, you can't steer a parked car, so hit the yeah. gas. <laughs> just try to stay on the road. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. And uh, that's actually very true in life. <laughs> All right, yeah. Oh, that's good. So you, know, you wrote this book, and obviously that was a big inspiration for you. For you. It might have been even a confirmation for you in your move to Sarajevo. Would you say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, you know, when I read your story, I'm just amazed at, uh, there are, there are so many similarities between you and your distant cousin, Adeline Irby, uh, that you're both willing to give up so much, um, to help people in a different, you know, just sell everything and go, right? And to help people. As you wrote the story, um, what would you, what would you say the the big takeaway that they could reflect on on their own lives. What would be the big th um, takeaway? Because I think there's a connection here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope that my life one day even more resembles her life. Uh, yes. I see she had to give up so more than I did. Yeah. So much more than I did. She had to suffer so much more. And she was so much more consistent. I mean, 45 years she worked here. That's amazing. You know, she's, she's buried, I don't know, half a mile away from where I'm sitting right now. Oh, wow. And um, so in writing the book, a lot of my response was, wow, look at this woman. Uh, I hope that I can look more like her yeah. as I get older. Yeah. But tomorrow, actually, I'm talking to a group of high school students at a local high school. And uh, in, here in Bosnia, 60% of young people want to leave Bosnia. Is that right? And, yeah. And it's because they're searching for a life that they think will satisfy and fulfill them. Yeah. And they're searching for money. And yeah. they're searching for a job and purpose and yeah. a house and a car and, you know, a cat and for a dog and, you know, two kids or whatever. And they don't think they can find it here. But what I see in, in Miss Serby's story is someone who had all of that plus more. Yes. 
and was willing to risk it or give it up yeah. for a higher purpose. Yeah. For value, because she believed that the life that's lived to, to serve yourself is not a life worth living. Yeah. But the life lived in service to others yes. is a value. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah. Or the life lived doing that in fulfillment of the purpose that God has yeah. for your life. Yeah. And so for me, um, the challenge of the book is, uh, number one, are you willing to seek a purpose in life that's higher than your own happiness? Oh. Are you going to yeah. live in such a way that people around you become happy? Yeah. Because uh, of your service to God and others. Yeah. And then the second one is, are you willing to just let go of the comfort and take the risk and see where that takes you? Yeah. yeah. She had no idea where she would end up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In, in the book, uh, one of my favorite stories is she's with her friend Georgina traveling across uh, the middle of Central Europe. Um, on the way to Bratislava over the mountains just for historical travel, ex exploration. And she and her friend get arrested uh, by the Hungarian army yes. and accused of being spies. Yeah. <laughs> and they're accused of being spies for the pan Slavs, the pan Slavistic sympathizers. And they didn't okay. even know what that term meant. meant. Yeah. Can you imagine being arrested? Oh. And you don't even know what <laughs> no. you're being arrested for? No. So, I mean, they were released after a day because they were British citizens and you can't really hold them very long in that time. But um, they got out and they said, let's go find out what we were arrested for. Yeah. You, that wasn't because she said, I'm, I'm going to go move to Bosnia because I really care about those people. It was, she got arrested, accused of something. She didn't know what it was. She decided to look it up and figure out what it was. And that meant she needed to go travel around this area of the world to figure out yeah. more who these Slavic people were. She fell in love with them. Uh, she saw their need, and she wanted to meet that need. So it's like she started down a road, and she said, I'm going to keep going down this road even though I don't quite know where it's going to go. Yeah. And she kept making decisions along the way. I think that's sort of how life works. I think if we're moving, if, um, if, if we're seeking to, to serve God and look for the purpose he has in our life, then the road is going to make lots of turns, and we'll have to make decisions along the way, and we'll end up somewhere we never imagined. But yeah. like we were talking about earlier, all those threads will come together and realize this is where I was meant to be all along. Yeah. Wow. That's just amazing. And that is so inspiring. And Josh, I just think, I just think there's uh, so many people listening to who will reevaluate what's my number one. <laughs> is it just yeah. the hap is it happiness of myself or is it that I actually want to serve others, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, wow. That's amazing. So here's here's my next question because this is sort of related. Um, uh, so as you have lived in Sarajevo, I've I just uh, I've I've been so inspired by your blog posts in mm -hmm. in your blog, and uh, I, I've noticed that you've had a few stories there, uh, mm -hmm. just from people you've ran into around there, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so you know how is this just from people from people from like the university there, or just uh, um, I'm just I'm just wondering where you where you meet all these people and it's like, it must, it's almost like they spill out their heart to you. I just, I love that. <laughs> um, I, I meet, I think I meet lots of cool people and I, I, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's, I think, um, as you're moving along and, and trying to figure out what God has for you and you're moving in that direction, you tend to meet other people moving in that direction. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. No, just it like, does. Yeah. you know, if you, I don't know, hang outside the Walmart at 1 a.m. on a Friday night, you'll meet one kind of people. <laughs> if you do something <laughs> else, you'll meet another kind of people. So the direction you're heading, you tend to meet people similar to that. And and um, there are some, some really cool people doing some cool things yes. in the world. Yeah. I think about my friend, Anessa, who she's, she's actually from Bosnia, moved to America, and then moved back recently with her family. Yeah. And uh, during the war... She was a refugee in Slovenia, a yeah. uh, neighboring country, and she went, she was 19 years old, she had trying to pick up her schooling there, yeah. but they they were going to charge her as if she was a foreigner, even though oh, okay. they were just part of the same country until the war happened in yeah. the 90s. And then she noticed that there were all these kids in the town where she was who didn't have a school either. Yeah. And... 
that really bothered her. That here are these elementary school kids that are refugees and they can't go to school because the school says, no, you're foreigners, you can't come in. Oh, yeah. So she went to the director of the school and she's like, this is not right. Yeah. How do these kids need to go to school? And the director said, no, they can't. They're, they can't come in. They're foreigners. And so she, uh, she decided, she saw there was a, a building in the back of the school that wasn't used for half the day. So she went back to that same director and she said, can I use that room in the afternoon when nobody's using it for yeah. these kids to get to school? And he said, yes. Then she called the UN and said, can I, can I, we help pay for books for these kids? And they said, yes. So like within the, by the end of the week, she had started a school with 75 students who were all these refugee kids. Oh, I love it. She had recruited other refugees to be teachers. Yeah. And for three years during the war in the 90s, this school ran and these kids, instead of being refugees, they were students. Oh, my and goodness. Like, when I, I think I was just sitting at coffee and she mentioned something about that. I'm like, I need to talk to you more about that. Cause I'm like, <laughs> when I hear a story like that, I want to hear that. I want to, I want to understand what drove her to do that. What, what made her say, instead of just being discouraged or complaining or, you know, blaming somebody, which is what most of us usually do. Yes. Yes. Why did she say, I am going to do something about this? Yes. And I'm not going to take no for an answer. Yeah. These kids need to go to school. I will start a school at 19 years old if oh, I have to. That's amazing. So uh, when, when I meet someone and they, whether casually or over coffee, they say something that's interesting to me, I just say, let's go have coffee sometime. I want to hear more. And yeah. then I think the, the year of writing the book about Miss Irby made me like asking those follow-up questions more. Yeah. Uh, it made me want to hear the backstory more. And I think that's probably why... I'm getting more of the backstory now. Yeah. Wow. That is just, that's really neat. And I, I love that. All these connections that uh, come into your life because, you know, um, I mean, and that, and that, you know, happens to all of us in some sort of way. God will just bring, you know, these threads. And I guess the big thing is that we are um, just open to, you know, yeah. when these people come into our life and just, you know, listen to God, right? What he's wanting yeah. us to, you know, he'll spark something in us, you know, go hear their story or, you know, something, right? Yeah. Well, how, many, how many times do we hear a little bit of something from somebody we're passing or, or talking with and we think, I, I should ask more about that, but we don't. I know. I what know. What if we really, uh, really became students of other people's stories? Yes. That would be a much more fun world to be, to be it, in. It would, Yeah. Because then there'd probably be a way that we could we could help, right? And yeah. and do something uh, in some way or another. <laughs> or yeah. even or even they help us as we hear uh, their story and their courage and, yeah. and the choices that they've made. Oh, so and that's that, true. Yes. So it's uh, being a part of other people's stories. That's really kind of what we we do here. Is we you know we're open for college students to come and hang out. They're actually hanging out in the other room. I don't know if you can. Hear, hear people hanging out there playing darts or just listening to music or whatever. But um, when I'm sitting down with a student, I always want to hear what their story is and let them tell me more about themselves because yeah, uh, you know each person is unique and has their own story. And as we get to know them, we we just get to that deeper level of what really where they've been and where they're going. Yes. Well, and that is that is so great. That was actually one of my next questions. So if people are listening and they would just like to be part, some sort of small part of, you know, what, what you're doing there, Josh, is there a way they can give or help out or is there, I don't know, you know more <laughs> what yeah, they can. There is. I mean, what I, I find what we're do, doing very exciting, obviously enough to, to move to another country to do it. But um, like I mentioned before, 60% of young people want to leave Bosnia. Yes. And that's not a very good future for Bosnia. No. And, we live in a place where there's ethnic divisions, there's religious divisions, there's, in our city we have Muslim, Catholic, Orthodox, um, and there's, now there are people that, that come together, but there's a lot of divisions here, and so we want to create a s safe place for students to come, to belong to a community where they can actually talk about what they believe and where they're going in life. Yes. There's not a... There's not a pressure, but there's an openness of saying, you can disagree with me and, and I will not yell at you. Yes. Uh, and so we have this place that's open. Students can come here and get coffee anytime uh, during the day, and we don't charge them anything for that. And 
Yeah. There's people that wanted to help us to keep that going and uh, keep that up. Uh, we're working on putting a, a uh, website together. It's called the Bosnia Project. Okay. Dot com. The Bosnia Project. Okay. Dot com. And uh, there'll be some more information there, or they can always just send me an email at joshirby at yeah. gmail dot com. Actually, if, if they just had any other questions or about what we talked about, they're welcome to email me at joshirby at gmail dot com. Okay. But like one example of what we're doing at the end of March, we're going to put on an emotional intelligence seminar. We're bringing in speakers, and we'll have hopefully a hundred students attend. And uh, the process is helping students be more self-aware of what's going on in their life. Help them to think about what they really want out of life, areas yeah. they need to grow in. Yeah. And by the end, they will put together a personal development plan. Yeah. Now, there's no place here where students are being taught to think like that. Of areas they want to grow in. And then we're going to offer, we'll sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and we'll talk about your plan. And I will help you to, to grow in that area that you want to grow in. Oh, that's so awesome. So that's just a way of entering into the story, their story with them. Yes. And saying, you're not alone. I want to walk with you. You know, I have very strong beliefs about God and I would love to talk to you about that and to share my heart about yeah. the hope I found in God. But I want to walk with you in your story and hear, hear what's what's going on in your life. So yeah. that, those are some of the things that we're doing. That's amazing. Wow. That you are actually taking it a step further, that you're actually getting right into their life and saying, well, okay, so, you know, this is what you would like to do. Let's help with personal development so you can head in that direction. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. wow. You know, that's going to make such a difference, you know. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. This, this last question, I just wanted to... Uh, ask what sort of plans and projects uh, you have for okay so you're working you're you're doing a at the end of March you're having some speakers in and they're uh, yep. yeah um, and so I don't know like maybe you have uh, more things going on in the in this next year that are happening with the students or um, mm -hmm. or maybe even you're working on a book or I don't know <laughs> well I've uh... You know that when I when I started uh, writing the book about Miss Serby, yes. I had never written a paper longer than ten pages. Wow! And I did not know how to research books or how yeah. to write, so I had to had to bring some friends around to yell at me and critique my grammar and teach me how to write. But yeah. I discovered I really love writing, and yeah. so I'm going to continue writing on my blog. And yeah. it, it's a great place for me to to process what I'm learning in life. Yes. And so I'm going to continue with that and hope to continue to grow that. I have an idea for a book that I'll begin working on, hopefully, uh, in the next year. Um, and then I have dreams for Miss Irby's story. Like one of my dreams here in this country is why doesn't every high school in the country teach about Miss Irby and teach yeah. it in the right way? Yes. So I've started speaking in high schools. I, I did my first one in the fall. I'm going to do my second one tomorrow, actually. Um, and this, the second school is awesome. They they bought 10 copies of the book, and the 10 students have read the book already and are waiting for me to come tomorrow to talk about it with them. Oh, I love it's it. So cool. It's so cool. And uh, so things like that I want to keep doing to, to keep the story of Miss Irby alive because I think it's a message to young people in Bosnia particularly. Yes. And the yeah. point is, she gave up the life you long for so that you can have the opportunity of education. What are you going to do with this opportunity that she's given you? Yeah. And so I'm hoping to develop that. And then here, I mean, we have, we have long-term plans of seeing what we're doing here expand to all the major cities in Bosnia. Oh, that's and to awesome. Have, we have our first Bosnian couple who have been working with us are going to come on staff with us, and we're going to keep hoping to build really a Bosnian movement of students here yeah. that are doing what we're doing. So these are some of my plans that I have. I'd love to connect with anybody on the blog. I love it when people like you uh, comment or send me emails yes. and reply. Yeah. It's been a real fun space for me to explore with my creativity, I guess. Yeah. Well, you are a very talented writer, Josh. I just totally yeah, loved you. your I book. That. And I appreciate that. Oh, yes, you're welcome. I just... Uh, you know, it's neat when you discover one of your gifts, and obviously you have many other gifts, but that's obviously one of them, right? And 
I just, I feel like God's going to do big things for you with that. That's awesome. Like, you're already touching so many lives. That's so great. Um, so, uh, uh, I think that was actually uh, kind of all the questions I had. But, um, uh, so, your book, Meeting Miss Irby, if people wanted to uh, uh, find that, is that in any stores or is that just on Amazon? Or It's available on Amazon in both. Print and okay. ebook, okay. so they can find that yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I would highly encourage anyone listening to get that book. Uh, it'll change your life. Yeah. So, uh, well, thanks so much, Josh, for sharing thanks your so much, your, your amazing story today. And uh, I just uh, uh, I want to encourage uh, anyone that's listening. Um, uh, you know, if you want to just help out in some way, either connect with Josh at joshirby at gmail.com or the bosnia project.com which is coming soon is that right the, right, right. The, it should yeah. be up in march yeah. yeah okay okay so that's that's so great uh josh you were totally inspiring thanks so much for inviting me on it was really fun and privileged to get to talk about miss irby's life and also to have people ask me about my life what a fun chance to remember the crazy things that have been happening over the years. Oh, yes. Well, you know, and that's important because it's good when we can look and see sort of where, sort of where God's taken us, right? I think that's yeah. that's important, right? Yeah. 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 Well, and I just appreciate so much uh, your willingness in all your busyness to just take a little time out to yeah. uh, just to tell other people uh, your story. So, yeah. Thanks so much, Sonia.